All right, so next we're gonna go into rhythm. You click ECG rhythm here on this website. Okay, so we've talked about rate. You know, I said there's normal, there's fast, there's slow, there's very fast and there's very slow. Rhythm is kind of the same thing. Um, you, can, you can detect somebody's rhythm just by feeling their peripheral pulse. I used to tell my EMT students, like one of the best things to do when you first see a patient, especially if they're not looking super well, just feel their radial pulse. Just by putting your finger in the radial pulse, you're gonna get the rate, you're gonna get the rhythm, um, and you can tell a lot just from those two things. You're gonna know if they're bradycardic, are they tachycardic, are they very bradycardic, are they very tachycardic? Can you not feel a pulse? If you can't feel a pulse and they're talking to you, they have a pulse, it's just not detectable. Maybe their blood pressure is low, maybe their volume depleted. Um, if they're unresponsive, you shouldn't be checking your radial pulse anyways. You should be checking carotid and probably doing CPR if they have no pulse. Um, but just by checking here, you can get the rate and rhythm and the quality of it as well. You can tell if it's thready, if it's bounding, etc. So when we look at an EKG, we can kind of determine the same things. We can determine the rate, like I already talked about. We can also determine the rhythm. Now for rhythm, they've, you've probably already heard this, um, but you can be regular rhythm, which means that your heartbeats are coming at a regular pattern. Boom, 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 boom. Now you can be at a regular rhythm with a tachycardic rate. Boom, 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 boom. It could be slow and regular, boom, boom, boom. Um, but if it's irregular, there's two types of irregular. There's regularly irregular and irregularly irregular. I don't like saying those words because it's confusing, but people will say this and you will hear this, so you need to know what it means. Regularly irregular means that it's irregular, but there's some regularity to the irregularness of it, if that makes sense. So. Uh, one, you could describe this as like uh, something called bigeminy, where the heartbeats come in groups of two. They shouldn't come in groups of two, they should just be regular, but it would be like this. Boom, 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 boom. And you would feel that on the pulse. It would, it would be like tap, tap. You wouldn't feel anything, tap, tap. And on the EKG, you might see it. Boom, boom, and there might be some different looking morphology or just nothing at all. And then another pair of beats. That's regularly irregular. And then the other one is irregularly irregular. It's irregular, but there's no pattern to it. There's no regularity to it. That would typically be atrial fibrillation where there is no rhyme or reason to when the heartbeats come. So there won't be any pattern at all. It'll just be like boom, ba boom, 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 boom. There's no pattern. It's just irregularly irregular. So you need to know that right here is where they're talking about that. So now we've looked at the EKG, we've determined the rate, we know if it's slow or fast or normal. Uh, we've looked at the rhythm, we've determined if it's regular or irregular, and if it is irregular, is it irregularly irregular or is it regularly irregular? You need to know that, I'm telling you. And then for the QRS morphology, what does that mean? Well, we talked about what the PQRS T waves are. Let me pull it up again. Remember, so P, QRS, T. So QRS morphology. This is the QRS complex right here. And morphology is, what does it look like? So there's two things. The QRS can be narrow or it can be wide. It should be narrow. And if it's wide, something is going on. So if it's narrow, that means it's coming from the top of the heart, either from the SA node, um, from somewhere, it's, it's somewhere above the ventricles. If it's a narrow complex uh, QRS, it's coming from somewhere above the ventricles. The electrical impulse is originating from above the ventricles if the QRS is narrow, that's good. If it's wide, that means that there is some sort of bundle branch block or the QRS complex is coming, like the electrical complex is coming from the ventricles itself. Uh, QRS complex should not be wide. Um, or it could be an electrolyte abnormality. So just without going into all those details again, the QRS complex can be narrow or it can be wide. It should typically be narrow. Um, so then the P waves. When you're looking for P waves, you should see, well, you should see a P wave before every QRS and you should see a QRS after every P wave. If you don't see a P wave in any of the leads at all, something's probably wrong. If you don't see P waves before every QRS, something's probably wrong. Now. This does not mean that you're going to see a P wave in every single lead. And we'll talk about what leads are later. But the reason we call this the 12 lead is because there's 12 different views of the heart, 12 different leads. If you look on this normal looking 12 lead, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 sections up to this EKG. And then on the bottom, there's this long strip. So this long strip represents one lead for 10 full seconds. So this is where you typically should be looking when you're evaluating the morphology of each of these waves. If you look here, for example, we can evaluate this, but then on this dashed line, your lead or your view changes to this view. And I know they look similar, but trust me, they're not gonna look similar in all EKGs. And then when you go here, you're switching again from what's lead AVF to V3. It's a different view of the heart. You can tell that it looks, this right here looks different than this. I know you can tell that even though we haven't gotten into that. And then again, we switch to V6. It looks different than right here. Or you can look at the bottom, which is called the rhythm strip. Most 12 leads will have a rhythm strip on the bottom and you can evaluate. If you see the P waves, they're before the QRS. The QRSs are after the P waves. And if you look at every P QRST, they have that. The P comes before the QRS, the QRS comes after the P wave. Um, so I was just saying the relationship between the P and QRSs, make sure that they have a relationship to each other. Um, if they don't have a relationship to each other, like I said, if the P waves are missing on some of these, there can be problems. And those are arrhythmias, which we'll talk about later. Um, onset and termination. Uh, I guess one thing you could think about is, let's say that you have like these nice regular beats and all of a sudden there's like a pause. That's probably a problem. Um, but looking at this, there's, there's no pause at all. It looks nice and regular and there's nice P waves, there's nice narrow QRSs, there's nice T waves that aren't too big or small. They're not flipped or anything. So, so far so good. Um, so that's really it for rhythm. Um, so next thing we'll go into is, we'll, we'll do the uh, lead positioning and then we'll go into axis. Axis is kind of confusing. So next we'll just talk about lead positioning.